Located in Titusville is the American Space Museum and Space Walk of Fame. While the tour is about an hour, here are a few highlights. Come along with us as we learn about some of the history of space exploration. Rocketry started with uh, three different people that were um, scientists. Uh, Robert Goddard was, was, was the American scientist. Robert Goddard came up with the, um, the theory of using liquid fuel instead of solid fuel. So years ago, when, uh, back when the, Herbal, the Wright brothers were flying airplanes, they used to use, um, they would put a, a gunpowder for rockets, but they, they, they couldn't control it. So they wanted liquid fuel so they could control the, 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 the planes. And that's where Robert Goddard came in. He came up with an idea to have liquid fuel, and his, his very first rocket he came up with. And that rocket only flew 41 feet high, that was about it. And um, during World War II, what happened was the, the, the Germany went to war. They wanted to use these, these, these guys that were, with rockets, they wanted to use them to help build a, a rocket that they could use for war, warfare. And that's when they came up with the V-2 rocket. That's the rocket that the Germans would use, and they would, they would actually fly them into like England and stuff and, and bomb, use it for, for bombing places. But it wasn't really that ac accurate of a rocket, but it still cr created a lot of damage. So after World War II was over, the United States and, and Russia, or should I say Soviet Union, we split up, we split up the amount of uh, scientists and rockets that they had. So the United States got Herman O'Burr, and they also got this man right here, Werner Von Braun. Now, Von Braun is, was, is really one of the most important people when it comes to rocketry in the United States because a lot of the, the rockets that we use today was designed by him. So what he designed was he designed the very first American uh, satellite. It was called Explorer 1. Now, what the Explorer 1 did, it had a, it had a probe in there by a guy by the name of James Van Allen, and he put a probe in there and it measured, it measured the... Uh, the uh, magnetic field around the around the Earth, and they, that's where they come up with the, the Van Allen belt. So now they want to put human beings in space, but they don't want to risk the, their lives. And the United States says we're going to use spider monkeys. So here's a spider monkey. So they use about half a dozen of these little spider monkeys, and they put them up into space to see if they, they could live or not. Well, they eventually went from spider monkeys to chimpanzees, and the chimpanzee they went with it was a chimpanzee by the name of Ham. Now Ham would be the first technically American into space. All seven of these men were all test pilots, three from, the, three from the Navy, three from the Air Force, and one Marine. John Glenn was the one Marine. Now, the very first person in space happened to be a Russian by the name of Yuri Gagarin, but the very first American space was Alan Shep. These women were called the Mercury 13. They were trained at the exact same time the men were training. They were going to put women in space. They figured the women were lighter, and they were better on, under stress. So they figured, well, we'll put some women in space. First American woman to walk in space was um, was Kathy Sullivan. We all know Sally Sally Ride was the very first American in space. The Mercury capsule was the was the very first one they went up on. It only had room for one person on it, so they used a rocket. It was called the Redstone rocket. Now this rocket was for suborbital, which means it would only go it would only go up so high, and then and then it would go down down downstream and then land in the water. The very, the very first rocket was the Redstone rocket for one person suborbital. Now they want to put one person into orbit. So now they go to the Atlas rocket. This is a more powerful rocket. Now this rocket will be good to get, to get the astronauts, get two astronauts and one astronaut into, into, into orbit. And the very first one to go into orbit was John Glenn. Now here's a picture of John Glenn work, working, at, working down, down, at, down at the Cape. And he's got his, hel his helmet on right there, and there's his, hel there's his actual helmet, John Glenn's helmet, it's right there. They found that one of the blockhouses had been, I guess they had left it there, and he forgot all about it. Now, this is the button that they used to, to actually launch John Glenn back in 1962. And when he went up on the, on the Mercury capsule, and that's the button that they used. This is, the, this is when they started using the Titan. Now, the Titan rocket was for the same thing, a capsule, but now you can put two men into space. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to use the Gemini uh, mission as, as a way to uh, practice to go to the moon. See, to, in order for us to go to the moon, you'd have to be able to be in space for two weeks, you'd be able to do an orbital rendezvous, and, and to be able to do a spacewalk. Here's a markup of the International Space Station. These are all the different countries that actually worked on it to basically it, mimic walking, walking on the moon. And it's, it's very rigid, as you can see. It takes two people to put someone in here. The rigidness right here is, is what they used to use back in their day. Now they're doing it differently. They're using 3D printers now for, for um, 
for the arms and stuff so you can see it's much more much more flexible to move around now this console is actually showing you the last the last uh, space shuttle if you want to watch it later on you can see this was the last the last space shuttle and this was the console that they used. space shuttle tie that's off the back the, the back of this shuttle they would only use these they would only use these these tires once and the reason for that when the shuttle was coming in uh, these tires aren't turning until it hits the ground. When that shell hit the ground, these tires went from zero to 250 miles an hour. So these tires would get, get, get worn out pretty fast. So this room is dedicated to all the workers from NASA. People don't realize it's, it's more than just NASA employees. It, there's contractors that are all over. They, uh, this, this basically shows you all the different jobs. There's tens of thousands of people that are involved and in, in behind every one of these astronauts. And what they do is they got this program. It's called the... It's called the Snoopy, Silver Snoopy Award. And what that is, is an astronaut will go into space with a, with a silver Snoopy pin. And the astronaut will come back to Earth and he will, he will award the pin plus an appreciation to the employee that went above and beyond their job. And it, 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 with them, um, see, they would, they would receive that plus a certificate signed by the astronaut. The pin was actually designed by, by Charles Schultz with the same one to design the peanuts itself. The Atlas Centaur rocket and all the equipment's gonna be right inside of here. Now this was from 36B. This is an, this is an example of a, of a launch pad. You would, have your, you would have your block house over here. You'd have your rocket there. And then you'd have all the, all, the, all the fuel that they need for the rocket. Every, everything was controlled from the blockhouse. Blockhouse is made of solid cement, no windows. The only way they could see out of the blockhouse was with a periscope. On the top, there, that's the periscope from Blockhouse 36B. And behind it is the, 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 the light tower that was on top of, the, uh, the, on top of the, the light warning light that was on top of 36B tower. That's, that's the light right there. If you look at this picture, this is a, an, the active blockhouse when it was being used. And this was on the second floor. The first floor was all computers. If you look at the flag right there, this is Atlas Centara, Centara. The flag is right on the wall right there. Now this rocket right here, it would be the Atlas Centaur rocket. The bottom part, the first stage is, is an Atlas rocket. The top part is a Centaur. So the Atlas Centaur rocket. Um, it was, it was made, made so thinly that they had, they had to use, uh, they had to pressurize it with, with, with uh, nitrogen so it wouldn't collapse from its own weight. So, Mod 4 sequencer actually controlled that rocket launch. This would, this would, this would, this would go through all, this, all the sequences to make sure all the systems were working right. Hydraulics, uh, whatever, whatever it was, it goes for everyone. And if, and if any red light came on, if one of the systems wasn't working correctly, it would automatically shut the launch off. Now this, this is built. This is this was built in 1960. Each each launch pad had had one in their blockhouse. All of them got thrown out. This one was in storage for like 20 some years, and they ended up donating it to the uh, to this, the museum. Now the man that worked on this machine, his name was Mac, Mr. Mac. Now, Mr. Mac, here's a picture of Mr. Mac when he was a young guy in 1962. Is Mr. Mac working on that machine? Now, today, Mr. Mac still volunteers here. There he is now. There's a, there's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of people with a lot of history that volunteer here. I just, see this, I just love, love listening to their stories, you know? But this machine had no computer to it. It was all, all sequences and stuff. They would, they would come up with a more advanced one would be this one here and eventually this one right here would have a, would have a computer to it. But I'm gonna run this machine for you. You're gonna hear this sound. And that's exactly what's inside. It's, it's, going, through, it's going through a series of sequences. Check, check and make sure everything is correct. And if, they, and if everything works correct, then it will, it will launch, launch the rocket. This, was how they, this is how they, they wired the, the, this machine back in the day. It was almost like, um, like the telephone operators, if you wanted to make a phone call, they'd switch the wires around. You know, they move one wire to one wire, and they can make the connection. Well, that's how the connections work. It was really all antiquated and stuff. Man, you, you won't see that anymore. Watch the launch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. 
six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have ignition. Lift off. 